How's it going everyone, Raf here from BNC Camera, and in today's episode we'll be giving you the sweet details on how to capture some delectable treats. And of course, we're talking about cookies. Who doesn't love cookies? Well, unless of course you're not fond of sweets, or baked goods, or both. <laughs> Regardless, if you are a baker, you know the importance of conveying your cookie through a photograph. A photo of your cookie can be a make or break deal. If the cookie doesn't look good, no one will want to use the recipe or purchase the cookie. A pretty cookie is what everyone wants, so if you're an amateur photographer, you may be wondering how you get the perfect cookie photo. Let's go ahead and discuss how to go about doing that. Be mindful of the crumbs of knowledge that we'll be leaving for you today to become a pro when it comes to your precious pastries. Okay, so we'll be hitting on backgrounds, cameras, settings, accessories, composition, and post-processing for your cookie shots. Okay, so your cookie is going to be the star of the photo shoot, but this doesn't mean you can forget about your background. Your background is just as crucial as the cookie itself. Presentation is everything. Try using a decorative platter or just a plain white background. You can also add a few extra elements like supporting cast members. You can have your cookies arranged on a white background but include some of your tools, like piping bags, neatly in the frame. You can sweeten that shot up a little bit further by adding a cup of sugar off to the side. You can even have that slightly out of focus. Now it's super simple to whip out that phone to take a photo, but believe us when we say to have a solid camera system that has manual controls to hone in on your product. Having that really good camera will really set your photograph apart from the others. Whether you run a cooking blog or promote your bakery, you will be taking plenty of photos. Invest in a camera and learn its functions. Don't let it scare you. DSLRs and mirrorless systems will have way more capabilities than a smartphone. Now once you're set on a solid camera system, be sure to get acquainted with your camera settings. This is where trial and error will really happen. You'll want to learn more about your camera settings like ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, the holy trinity of camera settings. These settings will alter the appearance of your photographs, and sometimes the best thing to do is just play around with your dials to see the outcome. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the exposure triangle and how it's going to affect your photos, be sure to check out the video that we made as well too. But in a nutshell, your ISO determines how sensitive your camera will be to light. Low ISO values equal less sensitivity to light, and the higher ISO values equal more sensitivity. For cookie photography, try starting with an ISO 400 or less. Try not to go higher than 1600. For your shutter speed, this one should be pretty simple. Shutter speed is how fast your shutter stays open when you click the button that takes the picture. If you aren't using a tripod, you'll need a fast shutter speed like 1 40th of a second. If you have a tripod, you can go slower. Slower shutter speeds without a tripod results in a blurry photo. A cool one you can try is taking photos of cookies as you're dumping them into a tray. For that, you'd need a faster shutter speed to freeze the cookies midair. Anywhere around 1 200th of a second or so should do the trick. Just be mindful of your exposure triangle and expose your shot accordingly. And lastly, your aperture. Aperture measures how wide the opening of your lens can get, which will also result in more light coming in. You can measure aperture by f-stops. You can stick around with an aperture of f2.8 or so. Next key thing is going to be lighting. Your light will dictate whether or not you get a good shot. Simple as that. Lighting is so important. If you aren't taking your photos in natural light, you may want to invest in a lighting kit. Just as important, if not more so than anything else we've discussed, is going to be your composition. Just because you need to focus entirely on your cookie doesn't mean you can get a little creative with your composition. Try taking your photos at different angles to capture new perspectives. You don't have to only take head-on shots of your cookies. You can go to the side to try and show the depth from a different angle. Typically, food photography is taken from 90 degrees, 45 degrees, or straight on. The 45 degree angle shots are popular because that's how we exactly see our food. Close-up shots are also essential to highlight the texture of your cookie. And lastly, never try to over-edit your images. Don't over-edit unless you're trying to get some artsy image for something other than actually selling your cookie. Almost always, never over-edit. You want your cookie to look natural, not an imposter. Use Adobe Photoshop for color correction and adjusting highlights, shadows, brightness, and contrast. Sometimes you just need a little crop, and you're good to go. And these are our recommendations, which will hopefully help you build your cookie photography portfolio. You can't go wrong with the recipe we had outlined. But hey, also don't be afraid to freestyle and switch it up to add your own personal character to the shot. In a way, baking and photography do go hand in hand. Thanks for joining us in this jubilant journey. If you enjoyed it and found it insightful, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to us as well too. We'll have plenty more tips and ideas to discuss with you later on down the pipeline, so definitely keep it locked. 
Once more, this is Raf from BNC Camera, and we'll catch you on the next video.